Welcome to Excel Metric number 1,211. If you want to download this work, 1,210 to 1,214 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about a new function that can handle array operations without any special keystroke, the chi-square.test function. Now, in order to get something from this video, you don't have to know about the uh, statistics part of this function, because we'll also see something cool about array operations on different size arrays. Now, I wrote a book called Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas, all about array formulas. And in that book, I list the only four functions in Excel sum product, lookup, index, and aggregate, which can do array operations without any special keystroke. The special keystroke, of course, if you read the book, is Control Shift Enter. But these don't need that special keystroke. And lo and behold, the other day I was doing a chi square test using the chi square dot test function, and it can do array operations without Control Shift Enter. So we have to add this function to the list. So there's five functions in Excel that can do array operations without Control Shift Enter. Now, in order to do the chi-square test, we actually have to take our observed frequencies and compare them to expected frequencies. Now, I'm actually going to do the expected frequency calculation as an array operation in both of these cells here. But I want to do them first in the cell so we have something visually to compare to. Now, I'm actually going to highlight the whole range in advance and use mixed cell references here. In this active cell, I'm going to create a formula, and then I'll use Control-Enter to pipe it all the way through. Now, this expected range has to be the same size as our observed range. All right, here's the calculation for expected frequency. I have to say equals give me the actual row total for all the lates from all three samples. And that cell reference needs to be locked when we copy it to the side, but not when we copy it down. So I have to use a mixed cell reference hitting the F4 key one, two, three times. The column reference is locked, so it's E7 all the way. But when I copy it down, it moves to E8. Then I have to divide it by the grand total. And that has to be locked F4 in all directions. Then I have to multiply it by the column total. Now, this column total, when I copy it down, needs to be locked. So I have to lock that 9. F4 once and twice. But when I move it to the side, the B needs to move to C and D. Now, there's my formula. I'm going to Control Enter to populate this formula all the way through. If I go to the last cell and hit F2, you could see it got it perfect. Notice the mixed cell references did their thing, right? Every single E7 in this row right here is locked on 146. And the 854 for count of on time is exactly locked all the way in this row. Not only that, but mixed cell references, there's that 300. But when I go down, it's locked. When I move to the side, it moves. Now, this actually is exactly like the resultant array we're going to get in our formula. And let's go ahead and do it. Remember, we did these here just so we have a visual to, to look at and compare. Equals, and here it is, chi square dot test. Actual range, that's the observed. And here, it's absolutely amazing. Expected range. Now, I'm actually going to take both cells. And notice, these are two cells. And these are called row totals. But actually, they're two values in a column. The first one is in row 7. The second one is row 8. If I were to highlight this and evaluate this, I want to look at the what's called array syntax. So I'm going to hit F9. Notice array syntax is when you hard code values into formulas. Curly brackets house any array of values. And semicolons mean go down a row. Control Z. Now, watch this. Here's our first example of an array operation. I'm doing division, which is a math operation, on more than one value. There's one, two values. And I'm going to divide it by the grand total. Now, this is an array operation. When I give it two rows divided by a single value, when I evaluate it, hitting the F9 key, array syntax curly brackets, semicolon means go down a row. Now, those are actually the two proportions we're going to need for our expected frequency calculation, Control Z. Now we're going to do a second array operation, and it's going to be yet a different sized array. Now, when I highlight this, notice it really is values in a row. But it's really 
going across the columns. If you were to highlight this in F9 to look at the array syntax, notice curly brackets always house the array, but commas mean go over a column, go over a column. I always remember that comma starts with C and column starts with C. So that's how I memorize that the comma means column, and then the other one, the semicolon, means rows. Now, here's our second array operation. One, two values from that resultant array in rows times three values in columns. When you multiply these different sized arrays, two rows by three columns, you are going to get a resultant array that's exactly two rows by three columns. It'll be exactly these values right here. So when I highlight this and hit the F9 key, there it is, array syntax, curly brackets. How's the array? And look at that, the first value right there. Comma means go over a column, just as it does here. There's our next value. Comma means go over a column, just as it does here. And there's the semicolon. It means go down a row. So our first point is array operations on different size arrays. Two rows by three columns gives us, as we probably would expect, two rows by three columns. Not all array operations in Excel work that, like the mmult function, which does matrix multiplication, does not follow that rule. Neither does some product. Some product function, which multiplies arrays, only allows you to multiply arrays that are the same size. And actually, I cover all that in chapter 18 in this book. All right, Control Z. Here's the moment of truth. That's an array operation. All but five functions require Control Shift Enter. When I just hit Enter, it calculates without Control Shift Enter. And in the book, I talk about implicit intersection. If I move this over here, it's not, it's, it's working no matter what. Control Z. That is totally amazing. Now, to compare and contrast, that argument handled it. If we wanted to check, because one of the rules in order to use chi square p value and compare it to alpha is that all of your expected frequency have to be greater than or equal to 5. Well, if you want to do the single cell formula and you didn't want to do it in the cells, we'd have to check that. And we could do that by using the AND function. I could simply repeat this. There's the two values. I'm going to divide by the grand total and multiply by our column totals. If I were to click in F9, I get the same exact values, Control Z. If I were then to go greater than or equal to 5, and actually I have to be sure and put parentheses around the operations here, because I need to force division and multiplying before my comparative operator. There's an array operation, but when I hit Enter on all but these five functions, you get a value error. So in order to get this one to work, I have to do the special keystroke, Control, Shift, Enter. Now actually, F2, I can evaluate this. And this is going to deliver a bunch of trues, F9, and will only deliver a true to the cell when all the tests are passed, which means all expected values are greater than 5, Control Z, Control Shift Enter. All right, so a little bit about multiplying different sized arrays, about the chi square dot test function in this expected range. Actually, this one works also if you put an array calculation there. And then we saw a similar array operation where we had to use that special keystroke. All right, we'll see you next video.